Today, I go over five of the best upgrades you can do to your mountain bike. What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be giving you five mountain bike upgrades that I feel are the best you can do. I plan to do a bunch of these catered to all different budgets. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to get instant notifications when they come out. A lot of these come on new bikes today, but if you have a cheaper bike, you will definitely benefit from this list. So let's start it off with a 1x12 group set upgrade. One of the best upgrades you can do to your bike is a 1x12 drivetrain. Most bikes nowadays come with them, but if your bike is on the cheaper side, chances are it doesn't have one. You might have a 2x or a 3x setup. Switching to a 1x12 will give you a 500 plus percent increase in pedaling efficiency. That will help you on hills, flat, you name it. The gearing is super wide and you will always find the right gear to be in. There are multiple to choose from, SRAM, Shimano, Box, and many more. All have different price points, materials, and strength, so make sure you choose what's best for you. Next on our list is flat pedals. When you bought your bike, you may have noticed that it didn't come with pedals, or your bike shop may have been nice enough to include some crappy plastic pedals that really have no benefit other than to test ride the bike before you buy it. If you're like me and you come from the BMX world, you want your feet to be gripped up but not clipped to the pedals. That's where flat pedals come into play. They feature a nice flat wide design with replaceable nuts and bolts that hold your feet firmly on the pedals. I like to jump so I want my feet to be able to move freely on the pedals and not be stuck in one position. But be warned if you hit your shin, you're gonna have a bad time. Now that you have your gearing and pedals situated, you need to put that newfound power to the ground. No better way to do that than with a tire upgrade. If you find yourself washing out around corners or spinning when pedaling up hills, this can be easily combated by setting air pressure differently or just replacing your tires to something with more grip. Sometimes that's not enough. Maybe you replace your tires and lowered air pressure. You have great grip now, but seem to be getting a lot of pinch flats on your tubes. This can be fixed by going tubeless. There are many advantages to tubeless, such as running way lower air pressures. Because there's no tube, you don't have to worry about the tube pinching. If you get a puncture, more times than not, the sealant will seal the hole. Not all tires and wheels are tubeless compatible though, so make sure you do the research to see if you can make the switch. Now you're all gripped up, you can make the hills with ease, but on the descent, you notice that you're bottoming out your suspension, or your suspension is very rough and bouncy. Lucky for you, you can easily change that in five minutes. One of the most important modifications you can do to your bike, which is actually the cheapest, free, is to properly set up your suspension. I'm going to assume you have air suspension. If you find yourself bottoming out a lot or you have so much air pressure that your suspension is hard and harsh, you will benefit from air volume spacers. All of the major suspension companies make these for their shocks and forks. They allow you to have a more progressive coil spring-like feel by taking up volume in the air chamber as the suspension articulates. They allow you to keep your small bump sensitivity, but also get nice and firm on those big hits. The final upgrade on this list is a dropper seat post. If you've never ridden with a dropper post, you're missing out big time. Droppers are an awesome upgrade. When you're climbing, you want your seat way up high to aid in pedaling efficiency, but when you eventually get to the descent, you want that saddle out of the way so you can maneuver your bike in all different directions to safely get you and the bike to the bottom. If your seat is up high and you find yourself having to lean back far to get down a steep descent, you might catch your pants on your saddle and that can result in a crash. There are many different styles and sizes of dropper posts, internal and external routing just to name a few. For instance, my Trek does not have internal routing for a dropper post, while my Polygon here does. They're also available in multiple different budgets. I highly recommend that you get a dropper post if you do not currently have one. That does it for this video. Hopefully I was able to help you out with some of these awesome upgrades. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for instant notifications. I'll click the links down below in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.